if movies have taught me anything, is that detecting humans is a tricky business. You know, you've got the Voight Kampf machine in Blade Runner. I'm kind of nervous when I take tests. That's not so long ago. That was uh, set in 2019. And then you jump 20,000 years into the future and you've got the ganja bath from June. Put your right hand in the box. I hold at your neck the ganja bath. So clearly, detecting humans is a difficult business. So can you imagine my surprise when I'm scrolling through AliExpress and those guys have done it again. They've come up with this. A human presence sensor. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this little gadget, seeing what it does, and really asking the question, is it any more use than this? The humble passive infrared detector. Basically, you walk into the room and this detects you here. So what's the difference? We're going to find out. So let's go take a look. Let's just take a look at where a bottle is from and, and how much it costs. So just be careful here because I'm not actually logged into AliExpress. So some of these prices are basically including welcome deals and things like that, which is great if it's your first time, but not so good if not. But also keep in mind that you can actually get a lot of these things on bundle deals. So you actually buy sort of, I don't know, six or seven items. They all come together at the same time delivered. You tend to get free delivery and you get a bit of a discount. So anyway, this is the module I bought, the LD2410C. It's a 24 gigahertz human presence sensor and it actually uses frequency modulation continuous wave um, radar. So that's a, an interesting kind of radar, which I'll say a bit more about in a moment. But anyway, this is just one particular seller. I don't, I don't recommend any seller in particular. Um, if you look at some of the other sellers, so here's another one. They sell lots of different types. Some are slightly different prices. Some are the same. So there's one there that's particularly expensive. The one I got is this 2410C for no particular reason other than it was in the bundle deal but one interesting thing i found about it so i looked at the data sheet for it and it said it's got bluetooth but you know i'm just going to connect it to an esp i don't need the bluetooth but when i powered it up i noticed on my home assistant app that it actually detected a new device and within just one or two clicks I actually had a gauge moving on my um, home assistant dashboard showing how close i was to the radar so i thought that was pretty cool i didn't need to do any programming or anything it just worked which was pretty awesome so definitely the 2410c has got bluetooth i think one of the other modules has got BLE, so Bluetooth Low Energy, but I'm not sure which one. As far as I'm aware, they all work roughly the same though. So that's what I bought. Let's go and have a look at what it actually does. So this is the LD2410C module. It's really simple. It's got a serial interface. So you essentially power it using 5 volt and it's RX and TX, so 3.3 volt logic, which is super convenient if you're working with an ESP32. There's a pin labeled out, which is basically an on or off. So is a person detected or not? It's either high or low. It doesn't give you anything about the distance. And obviously there's the power on ground. So it's really simple to wire up. In terms of other specs, it's got a 5 meter range. So that's pretty massive that's you know much bigger than the size of this room and what's strange and what i really don't quite get yet is that it says that range is it's got a resolution of 0.75 meters of so 75 centimeters and when you read the data sheet it basically says like i think there's nine different bins so each bin or block is like worth 75 centimeters so if you're very close you'll be in block one if you're between 75 and 1.5 meters away you'll be in block two block three so on so on right up to five meters um but when i run the code the code's basically just using a library i found online it gives you a relatively precise measurement so it'll say you're you're 97 centimeters away or 92 centimeters away as you move which doesn't seem to fit with what the data sheet says so i do wonder if the code's doing something interesting there we're looking a bit more details it's actually got a 120 degree viewing angle so if you basically as you're looking at the screen now if you were within 120 degrees of that screen and, and the modules where your screen is then you'd be sort of in the line of sight also what's interesting is it's it detects you whether you're stationary or in motion so that's that's a bit different to like a pir sensor because um, they only detect um, basically motion 
in terms of other properties, it says it works at 24 gigahertz, but it's actually a, a swept frequency device. So it's not just working at one particular frequency, it actually works between 24 and 24.25 gigahertz. And that's in one of the ISM bands. So there's no danger using it wherever really. So it's quite a power hungry device. And looking at the data sheet, it says you need up to 200 milliamps. So that's quite a significant amount of current. And it's average operating currents around 79 milliamps. So quite high quite a high drain you certainly wouldn't want to be powering this from a battery and running it running it continuously just a few words on how this actually works and i'm certainly no expert on it so this is what i've managed to couple together from bits and pieces i've read on the web um, it uses this frequency modulation continuous wave so basically if you look at the plot on the top right hand corner it's the sort of lighter purple is the transmitted wave and you can see it starts at a low frequency in this case, low frequency is 24 gigahertz. And over a given time period, as it's transmitting, the frequency increases and up to around 24.25 gigahertz, so another 250 megahertz increase. Um, the receiving part basically receives the, the darker purple waveform. And from that time difference between the transmitted and the received and the beat frequency, but the difference in frequency at a given time, you can actually calculate distance away from the sensor. So that's not quite how sort of a conventional or radar works. Normally like a standard radar, if there is such a thing, transmits a fixed frequency. That wave hits a moving target and is Doppler shifted and the receiver picks up the Doppler shifted frequency. And it's the difference between the transmitted and the received frequency that tells you the speed of the object. It's slightly different to how this behaves. And also things pretty cool about these devices is that because they don't work on like an optical technique, it's not infrared or anything like that. As long as your enclosure is transparent to the 24 gigahertz, then it will work as though it's got perfect line of sight. So basically you can put it in a plastic box or an enclosure and it's going to work absolutely fine. The data sheet's got really a lot of information about how you can best design your um, ray dome um, to allow that signal through without causing any problems. So that's pretty cool. I like the idea that it can be hidden away. So enough chatting about how it actually works and what it does. Let's have a look about wiring it up. So as I say, it's really simple. It wires up to one of the UART ports on the, the DSP32 dev kit. So I'm using pin 16 and 17 or GPIO 16 and 17, should I say. They connect to the TX and the RX respectively. And then we simply power it from the five volts of the USB and we put a ground in. And that's it, four wires, super simple. So let's go get that wired up and have a look at it. So all we need to do to test this out is to use our um, four little jumper wires. There's the, basically the five volts from the USB, which goes into the VCC on the sensor. We've got the grounds, which go from the microcontroller to the sensor as well. And then we've got just the RX and the TX, which go to one of the hardware serial ports. So really that is it. Let's go and look at the code. So I have a blank sketch here and let's just go to library manager. If I just type the name of the um, sensor out, LD2410, you can see that there's two different um, libraries for this. I've actually installed both of them, both work. I just wanted to see what the differences was. I believe this one by Lavor Veltchev has got quite a few more examples. Whereas um, this one by Nick Reynolds has just got the, a basic read sketch and a, and a sketch to set the parameters. So those are both installed. I don't need to do that. But obviously if you're running it for the first time, you need to install one or both of them. Let's just go to the example sketch now and let's give this a try. So one thing I didn't record was when I first got this module, I didn't install any libraries. I just saw it had a sort of a serial port. So I connected it up and I just put in a really simple sketch to um, read the serial pins. And, you know, it churns out a massive amount of data. My heart sank a little bit because I was like, wow, well, I'm going to have to co process all this now and turn it into sort of human readable, you know, things that make sense. Thankfully, I found these libraries. So that was a real bonus. So let's have a look at this example sketch. Immediately we can see that it's on a different set of pins. So let's change those. I believe we're 16 and 17. I think that's the only change we need to do. So let's upload that. And set my tape measure to around 120 centimeters. I'm going to put that in a place. Of course, it's detecting my tape measure probably. So it's sort of hovering around 120, which is not bad, I guess. 
One thing I'd like to do though, is I'm going to modify this sketch to be able to um, just put out a number so we can look at this on a plot um, rather than having all this information. Well, here's the code. I've basically made some very small tweaks. I'm not going to talk through it all because it's um, not even my code really. It's just a, a very simple modification on the example script. And really all I've done is I've, I've removed the um, text where it says, you know, distance or whether it's stationary or moving. So let's just run that and turn the serial plotter on spitting out a single number we don't know if that's a moving target or stationary obviously if we're stationary this is updating every second so you would expect it to be the same number so I'll turn the serial plotter on and we'll try and go out of the picture now so i'm kind of out of the view of the sensor now i'm basically stood as far away from it as i possibly can in this tiny room let me just walk in now so we can see saying what well, i can barely read it from here about two meters is that sensible so that's about two meters on the tape measure and i would say roughly that's pretty much where i'm stood so i'd say that's quite accurate obviously it detects the tape measure as well it doesn't sound like the human detector to me if i stayed here you can see the plot is relatively constant and if i walk towards it that line should drop in so you can see that's kind of a pretty decent performance what confuses me and what I need to read more about is really how it's getting such accurate numbers when it shouldn't really do that. So just to wrap up this video, I'm pretty impressed with this little module. If you think about what it's actually doing, it's really technically amazing. So it's generating a 24 gigahertz ramped sort of frequency signal and it's listening for that signal coming back and it's doing some signal processing to calculate the distance. It's got really a lot of features for what it costs 81 pence, unbelievable. It's even got Bluetooth. So although this video doesn't really look about the Bluetooth, just the fact you can power it up and it, it's automatically detected in home assistance, absolutely amazing. So does it actually detect humans? Well, hmm, that's debatable. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So it certainly seems a lot more useful and practical than a um, passing with red sensor. Well, maybe not more practical, but certainly more useful. And I'll definitely be trying to use them in my projects in the future. So if you have any questions or you've used these modules before in your projects, please let me know in the chat because I'm really interested. I've certainly got quite a few ideas of things I'd like to try using these things for. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel. See you in the next one.